And we're moving right along in the program. Batting cleanup. It is the big headline of the night, and we're excited to have her here. Cinda Howard, uh, she is a fly fishing guide. She was with the Orvis organization for 15 years. She's been out on her own, just killing it with the Apache trout for, uh, for over eight years on her own as a guide. And it is the rise of the Apache trout. Cinda, thank you so much for being here. We're so excited to, uh, to talk to you because... You're going to help us out. You're going to help us out with this Apache trout, where to find them and the like. So let's just jump right in and get into the nitty gritty of this. Where are the spots to find the Apache trout? Well, as um, has already been covered, the Apache trout is native to the high country of Arizona, uh, mainly the White Mountain area. So you're going to have to drive a little bit out of Phoenix, Tucson, all of our populated areas to find these fish. Uh, you're looking at the areas around Greer, Sholo, Pine Top, Springerville. Uh, that puts you in Apache Trout Central. Um, and we have lots of beautiful headwater streams, wild streams, wild trout, uh, as long as a, gr a great stockery program, stocking program going on with Arizona Game and Fish, where they are also putting fish in places where people who want to keep fish, take fish home, have fish for dinner, they can do that as well, along with our great catch and release program for those of us who like to, the challenge of catching a wild trout on a fly or a lure. Now, I have to um, so uh, real quick, if you could, with with the catch and release, because most of the trout that we deal with here in in Maricopa County, uh, if you look at them wrong, they die. So uh, <laughs> catch and release, uh, catch and release isn't really something we think about sometimes when we, we're talking about trout here in in Maricopa County. Is uh, are we talking about Apache trout being a, a more hardy fish, a stronger fish, tougher fish? No, uh, in general, trout being a cold water fish, um, they it, it is a challenge sometimes to keep them alive in that catch and release game. Uh, those of us who who do it, you know, we certainly realize that. So the keys to a catch and release a fishery for trout is keeping those fish wet. Don't allow them to dry out. Don't keep them out of the water for more than 30 seconds. Using a barless hook is definitely helpful. You know, when we use a barbed hook, um, we tend to squeeze those fish pretty hard trying to get that hook out of their mouth. And if you just debarb it up front, you'll be much better off. And, you know, just making sure that, you know, they're not out of the water a long time. You're not squeezing them. You're not pulling them on the ground, even dragging a trout up on the shore, you know, when it bounces around, it's going to beat up its internal organs. So when we release a fish, we want to make sure that we release that fish healthy, alive, vibrant, that it swims off aggressively from your hands and it goes off and eats and reproduces and eats more baby Apache trout. So there certainly is a way to catch and release. Um, and that is just, you know, making sure that you are just handling those fish pretty delicately because you're absolutely right. They, you know, cold water trout aren't easy to keep alive once they're, once they're out of the water. So have a plan essentially. Once you, once you, once you feel that line tighten up, have a plan, know what you get, plan ahead to keep that fish alive. And use a rubber net. You know, we don't think about that either sometimes. You know, cloth nets that absorbs their protective coating. You know, all fish have a protective coating. It is their immune system. You know, it keeps them from absorbing things through their body, like anchor worm, hick, different things that attack them from the outside. So you don't want to absorb that coating. And so using a rubber net actually will keep that from happening and always wet your hands before you handle them. That also keeps you from absorbing their protective coating. And so, yes, have a plan, use a net, don't drag them on the bank and keep them out of the water as little as possible. I'm all about, you know, I'm a fly fishing guide. My deal is, you know, my clients want pictures with their fish, you know, keeping them wet is a good thing and something we should thrive for. But if you're going to take a fish, a picture of a fish, have it in the water until the camera's ready, Fish out of 10 seconds, picture, fish back in the water, he go. That's great. And once again, having a plan, I think, is is very key. So so how do we find them? We've got some good spots, but once we get to those spots in those areas, how, how do you find them and how do you approach them? Well, so with any of our wild trout, you know, the approach, you know, our waters are clear, they're small, they're skinny. Um, you know, into a fish, obviously we're a predator. Anything that makes a movement to a fish is a predator. So our approach is really important. And that approach is to make sure that you aren't putting any, uh, any big movements, any shadows on the water, anything that alerts the fish that, hey, we're here. Because what they're going to do is they're just going to hunker down and they're going to stop eating until they think that that danger is gone. So the approach should always be, think about fly to fish before the fish knows you're there. 
And if you can make that happen, you will catch a lot of fish in our small streams. Um, if you see fish spook, move on, you know, go to the next pool, keep moving. That's the great thing about our stream fishing is every pool is a new opportunity for you to throw a fly at a fish that doesn't know you're there yet. And that's the key. And then you want to fish structure. You know, you want to figure out, you know, in a lot of our Apache trout streams, there's just some good undercut banks. So you always want to fish the edges of those undercuts, the edges of rocks, anywhere where there's current. Current means food and oxygen um, and a good hiding place for a fish. So it's recognizing those spots where potentially a fish is going to be lying, place a fly right above that, drift over him, he eats it, fish on, fun stuff. Now, but but I think the key there is once spooked, move on, go do something else. Me, knuckleheads like me, I'll just chase them. I'll figure, okay, they're going that way. Let's just keep throwing flies at them and see what happens. I like that. Just move on because there's plenty, there, there's plenty of trout to be had. Exactly. Miles and miles of wild trout water, which means, you know, every pool, it's a, it's a redo. You get another shot at placing a fly to fish and hopefully he eats it. All right, so let's talk about eating. Let's uh, let's talk about Apache trout. Let's talk about their eating patterns and their their eating habits. Well, so my, like most other trout, uh, the majority of a trout's diet is bugs. You know, when you think about a trout, eighty percent of what they eat is bugs. Those bugs come from the water. Now they also eat bugs that blow into the water, like ants and crickets and grasshoppers. But your caddisflies, your mayflies, your midges, all of those bugs hatch in the water, come from the water. So when I'm looking for Apache trout, I typically fish bug patterns. Um, you know, most of our wild Apaches are going to be on the smaller side, probably aren't going to do well with crawdads and bait fish and that sort of thing. So I would stick with bugs. And the great thing about an Apache trout is they love to rise. They love to look up. So fishing on the surface in the summer, lots of times, even if you have a nymph drop below a dry fly, you're still going to get all the fish to come up on the dry. And so, you know, nothing other than a caddis, a um, blue wing olive, um, one of my favorites is a royal wolf fly. You know, if you're fishing any time between May through October, it is dry fly for, for Apache trout. And that is the fun of it because they're aggressive. They love to look up. They love to hit on top. And it's a lot of fun. So I would say size of your fly is a lot more important than the fly itself. You know, if you're getting a lot of rejections or a lot of hits on flies and you're not hooking the, the fish up, chances are your fly's too big. Um, I, you know, go smaller. And these fish, you know, are a little bit on the smaller side anyway. So anything, you know, from a 16, 18 dry fly, you're going to catch a lot of Apache trout in the day if your approach is good. Okay. So let's say you said 80% they're on the bugs. What's the other 20%? Other 20%, you know, fish also eat le leeches, bait fish, crawdads, scuds, um, you know, everything else that's in the water. But trout in particular like to eat bugs. And so trout. Which and, is why it's fly fishing. Right, right. But let's, let's talk about for, for all the bass fishermen, the bass anglers that are out there saying, okay, well, um, I, I go big bait, big fish. So is that the same in is the Apache trout world as well? No, um, not necessarily. You know what? There's um, there are some lakes uh, that have some bigger Apache trout still bug focused. A lot of times we'll also get them on leech patterns. Um, but still, if you can throw um, damsels, caddis, mayflies, you're probably going to catch more Apache trout. Um, you know, in the bass world, a bass is a super aggressive fish and the majority of his diet is not bugs. So that's kind of the difference between the fish. You know, when we're talking about trout, um, you know, they they like to eat bugs and that's a big majority of their diet. So it's what they're going to be keyed and focused on. And a lot of times when we are not catching trout, it's because we just aren't picking the right flies. You know, they really they know what they eat. They know what they see in their waters. They know what their food looks like. And, you know, a lot of times if you can really match, we call it matching that hatch. If you can match that hatch and figure out what they're looking for and what they're eating. Once you figure that out, you'll get into more fish. Okay. Now, you, now, Cinda, you, you've been doing this for eight years as a, as your own, on your own guiding service, mm -hmm. on your own. So you know where all the information is. Orvis prior to that, you know where all the information is and mm -hmm. it's right now it's in your head. So we, we, we right. don't have all of that information. Where do we find information on Apache trout? Where, what, what are the good resources for us? Well, so our best resource is Arizona Game and Fish Department. You know, they're the ones taking care of these fish and creating these opportunities that we have right now to go after these fish. Um, and so using and utilizing their website and their app um, is 
a great way to do that. You know, on their website, you can actually look at different Apache streams, up, Apache Trout streams up here. You know, they have them listed. And the other thing that they have, um, you know, is locations, GPS. I mean, it's, it's, you know, at this point with our technology, it's not super difficult to find. There's also, you know, they have a Facebook page, Fish AZ, that, you know, you, people also go those questions about where to find these fish or where they're catching these fish or different questions about how to catch them. And so Arizona Game and Fish has made a lot of opportunities for us to be able to, to, to find them and be able to fish for them. Okay. Now, here comes, here comes the big question now. What is the wild, was it, wait, yeah, I got it right, wild trout challenge? So as that is another thing that's going on with Arizona Game and Fish. And so part of being able to find the trout is they have the wild trout challenge. And so the wild trout challenge is we have our wild trout in Arizona, which would be um, a brookie, a rainbow, a brown, Apache, um, and not, not Gila any longer. Um, so you have those fish. They tell you where to find them. You go fish for them. You take a picture. And you send all that information to Arizona Game and Fish Department, your picture of where you caught them, when you caught them. And then they will send you a, a certificate along with some swag, could be a sweatshirt, a coffee cup, a bunch of different stuff. And so now you have something on your wall that said you completed the Arizona Wild Trout Challenge. And I've been working on completing that challenge in a day. Uh, that is my goal right now is to get it all done in a day. I did it in October and this one fish. <laughs> um, so it's, it's a start over. Um, but you can you can take as long as you want to, to complete this challenge. But what it will do, it'll help you find these streams and help you make you into a better fisherman because you're going after these fish, catching these wild fish. And it's fun. The certificate's kind of cool. The swag's kind of cool. It's just a, something to, to get involved and be involved with what's going on with our wild fisheries. It would be kind of cool. That's, I'm, I'm just like my children. My, my children are a chip off the old block. They, they'll start a sporting uh, a sporting league and say, hey, do we get a trophy at the end of this thing? We really want a trophy. Right. That's all about the trophy. Oh, yeah, we love that. Cinda Howard, uh, this has been uh, amazing uh, information. Now, everyone is just chomping at the bit to ask you a plethora of questions. So I hope you're ready for that. And I appreciate you sticking around for that. And I, I just appreciate you. I, I, I'm excited to have you on the program and I'm excited to uh, get you to get me really fired up about some trout fishing. So we're going to make that happen. So I'm going to open it up to questions. Awesome. Thank you.